Hey guys, this is Travis with Full Circle Melody. I'm going to talk to you about some mistakes that uh, typical DJs make, and I want to do something a little different with this. A lot of videos I watch, it's of DJs saying this is mistakes DJs make, but they never really point at themselves. So I'm going to talk about mistakes I have personally made, some mistakes that, that I've, I've seen and in other DJs as well, but I've also seen them myself, and I've, I've taken action to correct that. Now, nothing has ever been uh, disastrous, so the the equipment's never fell on the cake, or uh, we've never announced the wrong last name for a grand entrance. Um, we've never played the wrong uh, first dance song. Okay, maybe we did that once, um, but we, we won't include that in the five that I'm going to talk about today. I was training a DJ not too long ago, and I remember I asked him, I said, what are some of the mistakes you've made while DJing? And, and he explained some of these mistakes, and he'd made no excuses for them, and I, I just had a lot of respect for him uh, when, when he was just telling me all the stuff that he's done wrong, and I was looking at him doing the DJing that night, and he had the dance floor packed, and you can tell this dude has made some mistakes along the way to get to where he is now. So, one of my favorite uh, quotes is by Dave Ramsey. He says, success is a pile of failure you're standing on. Or um, Henry Ford said it really well too. He said, those who never make mistakes work for those of us who do. So, mistakes are not a bad thing. Um, if it was a bad thing, I would use this video instead to tell you of all the good things that uh, Full Circle Melody or myself have done, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to talk about five mistakes. I'll make it fairly quick. First mistake, <clears throat> is in my early days of doing this, I did not have a, uh, a backup of these songs. So it was a father-daughter dance, and for some reason that song didn't play. So I had to kind of, in a, in a way not to be distracting, I had to communicate with the bride, hey, is it okay if we play this other song instead? And she was, she was just fine with it. But from that, from that day forward, we have sometimes we have two or three different ways that we can play a song. If it doesn't work on the computer, or there's some kind of glitch, we can quickly uh, go to a different source uh, without even people noticing. It happened just the other day. I was playing a George Strait song, got specifically requested for a dance, and, and I, it, for some reason it wasn't playing. I went to a different source, and nobody even knew that I had problems with it. The second mistake I've made is not letting the bride uh, be my boss. Uh, she, she should be my boss in, in most areas unless my expertise is really uh, much more further up than hers on a certain situation and I'll kind of encourage uh, my way of things, I guess. But typically I don't. Whatever they say, I'll do. And One time I was setting up lights up for a ceremony and I was so proud of these up lights that just a few minutes prior to the ceremony, the mother came in and I was showing off these up lights like, oh, look, they're, they can change all these different colors. The bride specifically wanted white, but look, look at all these colors. It's really cool. And, and I was about to turn them back to white and the mother of the bride said, uh, oh, that pink looks really good. So I was like, oh, cool. She goes, yeah, you should, you should keep them pink. Keep them, keep them all pink. It's like, Okay, you are the mother of the bride, so you have some influence in this wedding. I'll, I'll do that. And just a few minutes, hardly even a few minutes prior to the ceremony, I guess the bride got a glimpse of it, and, and she sent word out to get to me to turn them all white again. So what I should have done was say the bride wants them white. They're staying white. I, I'm, not, I'm not turning them. I still think about what would happen if, if I was to have kept them pink and she wouldn't have got a glimpse of, of them before the ceremony. She may have walked out and instead of being in the moment of, of marrying her her uh, true love, she may have been thinking, why in the world is this room pink? So <clears throat> my, third uh, my third mistake is uh, this happened at an event. It wasn't even a wedding, but I started playing a song somebody requested. I wasn't familiar enough with the song, and I wasn't even paying attention to the song either. I just, oh, you want this song? Okay, I'll, I'll make it happen for you. I had a man come up and say, "Do you can you hear the language coming out of this? And so I listened for a minute, and sure enough, quite a bit of language. From that day on, it's we play the edited versions of everything. Um, that's one of uh, very few things that I'll tell a bride no on, or, or a couple no on, is... You know, we play the dirty version. Now that hardly ever happens. It has before, um, 
but I tell them we, we do the we do the edited version. If you want the dirty versions, you know, go find a DJ on Craigslist. They'll they'll take care of you. Uh, the fourth mistake I've made is not uh, not going through the names, especially a bridal party. When I introduce the bridal party, um, this happened early on as well. Luckily, a lot of these happened early on to where I've not made these same mistake. I've not made any of these mistakes twice. Um, and, and it's been a long time since I've even made these, but uh, I I was announcing names, and it was a uh, it was a cultural wedding, so there was some names on there that was very hard to pronounce. So I didn't ask anybody how do you pronounce these. I just started pronouncing them how how I felt like it should should be pronounced. And I I'll never forget one one guy came up and he said, "Man, you're just butchering these." And I felt pretty low. So since then, I always check and make sure I pronounce names right before I even try to, especially when it comes to announcing the bridal party uh, and obviously the last name of the of the couple, the new last name. I always make sure I have that right. So the last mistake that that I'm going to share with you. Now I've made more than five mistakes. These are the ones that, that I can really think of. Um, but the fifth one that I'm going to share with you today is I, I went to work or I went to a wedding uh, kind of with some with some baggage. Uh, it was a three-day weekend. All of the gigs were in Texas. Most of my gigs were in Oklahoma. That's where I live. But this weekend was just heavy on Texas. Now I was I was about to leave on on Friday and my dog got hit by a car and of course my wife was crying because my dog was really hurt the dog survived and she's actually still she's running around in the backyard right now actually so um, so thing things went well at the vet but we didn't know that at first and so I was stuck with a decision do I find do I call my backups to go play these weddings who they're not going to have time to learn the specific songs because we do live music too, so it's it's not just plugging in songs into the DJ system. So do I send the backups or do I go to these weddings and worry about my dog the whole time? I, w I went to the weddings. Um, my wife approved. She, she said, you know, this doesn't look like we're going to have to put our dog down, so this this should be okay. You should You should go to the wedding. So I did, but I let that bother me all weekend. And uh, I remember the last wedding we did, it was Sunday, you know, we're, we're still kind of, things are still up in the air as far as the dog, we're, we're hoping that she, she heals through the way the vet, um, the, from what the vet told us to do, if, if she didn't heal, it was gonna, it's gonna spell out trouble, so there's still great concern, and so the last wedding, I was just, I was kind of out of it, I mean, I was there, I did my job, but I didn't connect like I should have, and it's because of what was going on back at home. And so I remember we've we've never gotten a bad review ever. Uh, knock on knock on wood. I don't I don't predict that we ever will. We we come prepared and we we always strive to do an excellent job. But um, it's the first time somebody's ever reviewed us and said something negative in the review about us. She still recommended us for the live music and, and she, she still, you know, highly recommended us, but she also said their energy level is low and man that hurt because we don't want to come to a wedding and have low energy. And Now I'm going to make up the excuse that, that I was bothered by my dog, you know, not knowing what was going on. And, but I should have evaluated, maybe even sent the backups in and just told her maybe we won't do some of the live songs live we may just dj them something came up maybe give them a give them a a, a discount or something since they're not getting getting fully live music they'll still get some with our backups but uh, so those are the five mistakes that um i have recently or just in the past few years whenever i started doing this about six years ago have made and i've corrected those and and um, you know, I, I imagine I may still make some mistakes. I, 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 I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna say that I'm completely done making mistakes. But, but uh, those are the five that I've made. I wanted to share with you. Other DJs, if you're watching, uh, post in the comments about some mistakes you've made and how you've overcame them, uh, so that I can learn from you. Um, 
So thank you guys. Again, visit FullCircleMelody.com if you're interested in live music and DJ services. Thank you.